Hello and welcome. This is Patty Bennett. We are going to make some really cute pinwheel cards today. I'm so glad you have joined me. I hope that you will enjoy these. If you are joining me live on my Facebook page, then you are watching live on Friday, July 23rd. If you are watching me later on a replay, welcome back. This is so fun to share with you each Friday. So if you're joining me live, please go ahead and say hello so that I know that someone is here and that we are doing okay. All right, I'm just going to give everybody just a moment to settle in. So if you see the live button up here, then you know you are joining live. If you don't see that, then you're watching a replay, but I'm still going to try to look for your comments later as well. All right, so does it look a little better? I know I tried this just a few minutes ago and it was uh, real choppy. So, okay, Shan says it looks good. Uh, hi from Manitoba, Canada. Hi, Deb. Hi, Joanne. Oh, how sweet. She says, I'm glad I finally caught you live. Well, welcome, everyone. I've just given you a moment to settle in, and I hope that you will enjoy the video today. Hi, Marianne. Hi, Donna. Hi, Stacy. Hey, everybody. All right. So today we are going to make, look how cute these are. So there's the top view. They are called pinwheel cards. And look at the cool thing is that they fold flat, see that, to fit in an envelope. How cool is this? So you can see by these products right here that I am going to be using this. And I posted yesterday, I think it was on Instagram and my business Facebook page, our uh, color combo. Granny Apple Green Melon Mambo Polished Pink and Black. And it's a really fun, striking, colorful combo. I like to call them patty colors because, you know, I like the, the nice bright kind of colors. <laughs> and what we are using today are a few new products. We are using these new Summer Shadow Dyes. And you're going to find this in the Celebration catalog. So this year, Stampin' Up! decided to do celebration two times during the year. So we had one in January, February. Now we're having one August and September. So if you're catching this live in July, or maybe you're watching a replay in August and September, you would be able to select these dies. Here's what the dies look like, but I thought it was kind of easier to see if they're cut out. You'll be able to select this as one of your gifts if you would like that. So I hope that you're excited about this. And you might be thinking, well, okay, what about those stamps? So here's the stamp set that goes with it. And this is actually in the annual catalog, page 75. And I'll tell you something kind of funny about this is that I liked this set when the catalog came out. But I thought, well, I don't really want to fussy cut those flowers, so I'm going to wait. I'm not going to get that set yet. And then as a demonstrator, I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, we got to see this catalog and get these gifts early. So when I saw that they had the dies to match this set, I was like, oh yeah, I'm getting this set. So then I ordered the set. And I went ahead and used it for today's pinwheel card. So just quickly, just to show you that these two dies cut out the big floral images. This one cuts out the smaller greenery. And then the rest of these are kind of a standalone. They don't cut out anything from the set, but you can just use them to cut out. And let me show you, for instance... So if you cut these two and layer them, you get this. And I did the Melon Mambo darker in the big one in the background and the polished pink in, excuse me, in the outline to overlay. Same thing with these two. So let me show you a little closer. I really like how that looks. I think this is really pretty. And then I die cut the leaves in Granny Apple Green. You can layer or you don't have to layer. Like here, I don't have that background piece behind it. 
looks just fine. And then there's the little leaves peeking out behind the smaller flower. So just wanted to show you how I used the dies. And then I also used both of the stamped images, colored them in with my Stampin' Blends. I think you can kind of see those over here. So I have polished pink and granny apple green. There are some more of the dies, same concept, and the other stamped image. So I just loved how this turned out. And also, in this celebration catalog, that's where you're going to find all this beautiful black and white paper. So pretty. Let me show you that. So it is called... Let me see, did I keep the, oh, excuse me, I'm going to have to peek. I think it's penned something. Beautifully penned. I can't show you the inside yet. That's why I had to take it off camera. Beautifully penned. And there are three different patterned sheets that repeat four times in the pack. So it's kind of nice that you get four of every sheet. It allows you to make several projects or bigger projects. And here are three of the floral sides. And then let me show you on the back, you have stripes, dots, and kind of these scallopy wave type images. So those are the six designs in the pack of 12. And that is what I used for the background of this. And I know it's supposed to coordinate with the hand penned set, but I decided to pair it with this shaded summer set because that was a new set to me and I wanted to use it. So we are going to make one and then I have this cute one to show you too and we'll go over this as well because this features more new products. I know so many so many fun sneak peeks right? Do you love this? I don't know. Have you made one of these? Let me know. Comment and let me know if you have made a pinwheel tower card yet. I know they're really kind of like all the rage all over Facebook. Uh, and, excuse me. Pin, well, yeah, Facebook too. Uh, YouTube and Pinterest, they're like all over. So what I selected to do was to make mine to fit a five by seven envelope. And I'll tell you why. I had ordered five by seven envelopes off of Amazon. I ordered 250 of them because I was mailing out some certificates uh, to my team and I needed a larger size envelope. And then I needed six by nine envelopes, but I accidentally ordered more five by seven and I went, oh my gosh. So I have 500 of these. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but as you can see, when this is folded, it fits absolutely perfect in the 5x7, and that's why I went with this size. Yeah, I know I could have returned them, but I know that I will also use them up. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> All right, so we saw the sneak peeks. Um, did I mention, I don't know if I mentioned, I blog at pattystamps.com, and you can find ideas there um, just nearly every day. I try to blog every single day there. And these pinwheel measurements for this tower card, as well as the samples for this one, will be on pattystamps.com Saturday, July 24th. So you'll be able to see all the pictures of this and you'll be able to see the measurements. I will have this cute, cute, cute penguin one on my blog later next week. I'm not sure. I think, I think I said it for the 28th or 29th. I am not, I don't remember which day I um, scheduled that for, but the measurements will all be there and I will try to type them up and put them in the description of this video as well. It'll be later today, but I'll try to get to that for you as well. All righty. So, Oh, and I should mention, these measurements can be adjusted so that you can make this, when it's flat and folded, that it will fit in different size envelopes. It does not have to be five by seven. So I will, I'm not sure, I can't remember exactly where I saw all the measurements, somewhere online. And I will 
either link to that or type them up so that you can make different sizes. But again, we are doing the five by seven size today. All right, so let's look at the cute, cute, cute penguin one. Oh my gosh, this whole series, it's a bundle in, uh, and I can show, no, I can't show you the inside. Oh my goodness, I almost opened up the catalog. Holy business. Okay, <laughs> almost did that. So the holiday catalog has the stamp set and the punch for this penguin bundle. Super duper cute. So cute. So when you stamp them, you can use your punch to punch out the whole penguin. So it would be like that. Then you would stamp the feet and you would just hand cut out any of the accessories that you wanted. So that's how you would use the punch. Or in the celebration catalog, this paper is going to be one of the free items. And I just sort of have a feeling that it's going to go like hotcakes. I think it's going to be a favorite. There are six entire pattern sheets with all these cute little characters and the back sides are fabulous as well there's more in here and it's just phenomenal it is so cute and you'll see as we look at the card what I've done is just use my paper snips to fussy cut out these adorable characters so today to show you how to make this we are actually making the penguin one because I had already cut out the supplies to make it and so I thought okay oh Shan says can the penguins be punched out of the paper and I don't think so they are actually I fussy cut some so we oh that one could I bet yes one of them can yes Shan yes so that one can but there are other ones, see like this dancing one, that's not going to work. That won't be able to do it. Um, this one with the scarf and he's kind of waving, so that one would not be able to. But it's this one that, yes, you could punch out. So the rest of the characters I have just fussy cut with my snips. And it really didn't take that long. I did like a dozen of these and it went fairly quickly. It's not that involved. They're not too intricate. So good question. Thanks for asking that, Shan. And I don't even think I realized it because, duh, I fussy cut these and I could have punched them. Ah! Oh my goodness. Okay. Whatever. They're done. They're cute. They're adorable. And they're ready to use. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So we are going to Look at all the cute designer paper that goes into making these. Aren't they adorable? And we are going to go over the cardstock that you need to make this size. Again, this one fits in the 5 by 7 envelope. So let's start here with the base. We talk, or the envelope, we talked about that, 5 by 7 for this particular size. The base then, this is kind of interesting how it works, is also 5 by 7. So here's my base piece, five by seven. I have used my trimmer. You could also use the scoring tool if you prefer the scoring board. And you score it four times. Very easy. Half inch, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half. So I've already done that. And you're going to be able to see that now as I use my bone folder to score to um, reinforce the fold. So I did half inch, one and a half two and a half and three and a half. Very easy, not complicated, no small um, little measurements to remember. So here is your base piece with the scores. And I'm just going to show you before I put it together, you can see what that's going to form. And that is going to form the base of this card. And you're going to build on that. So I just kind of want to show you where I was headed. Now, there are lots of ways that you can do this. I want to show you what I found to be the easiest. I took my tear and tape and I just folded back this little half inch piece. 
I'm going to use my bone folder because I always like to really burnish it on there. So do you see that? It's just on the little half inch strip. Okay. I like to use a pokey tool to just get that paper backing to release. If you have your nails painted, it just kind of saves your nails. Now here is the absolute easiest way to form that square. So here's our piece, our half inch piece folded back. Okay, we have a score line right here. Ignore that. Here's your second score line. We're going to fold up at that second score line and just close this. That's all you have to do. I'm gonna burnish that. And then when this pops up, it's your perfect square. It's too hard to try to just do this kind of like up in the air and figure out and line it up. So that's it. That is the base of your card. It is not hard. Isn't it fun? This is easy. So easy. And then I'm calling these the wings, these extra pieces that we're going to put on. And you need three. They are three and a half by five each. Here's what they're going to do. They're going to attach. I think it's easiest for you to see it if I hold it up this way. Oh, and I discovered this. If you flatten it back down and you give that a good crease and then you crease it again this way, this is really going to help this to be able to fold either direction when you're done. So here's what these wings do. One of them goes there, one of them goes here, and one of them goes here. And that is the base of your pinwheel card. How cool is that? Now you might be wondering, she's got this pile of paper clips here. So this is what I did. The first time I made one, I could not quite visualize exactly where I was going to make all the different patterns on here like how did I want them to look how oh that one's like old how did I want them to kind of flow as I let me show you again so as you kind of flip through the card I wanted each scene to look different now you easily could just repeat the same patterns or you could do like every other one is the same I wanted all of mine just totally different. I wanted like just a different scene on each one. But when I had all those pieces on my desk, I just, I was like, wait, what? What do I do? How do I, what do I do with this? Where do I put it? <laughs> so this, that's what I did. I paper clipped them on. And then here we have the measurements for the designer paper. You're going to have four at three and a quarter by four and three quarters and four more at two and a quarter by four and three quarters. But I cut more than four because, again, I really didn't know what I wanted this to look like. So here are some of the smaller ones. So this would be the two and a quarter by four and three quarter. And I just cut a bunch. And I thought this way I can look through it and I can decide what am I gonna use. And then the larger one, three and a quarter by four and three quarter, again, I just cut several. I cut more than four because I wanted to just have options. And of course, you know, you could do the backs. But I just wanted to show you my thought process. I don't know if that, is that weird? I love to know how people kind of think through a project. And, and so I thought maybe it would help you. What you're going to have left are some one inch wide strips and you'll want to keep those if you want to do what I did here. I just used them up. So there's the little polka dot strip. Uh, that doesn't have a strip. This has the purple because I wanted to tie in over here, the freesia, I wanted to tie that in. And that one doesn't have one, but I did on this one we looked at first, I did, I think I put one on almost every page just because I liked all that extra contrast. So again, just keep those little one inch strips. So then here's what I did. 
I actually did it up in the air like this and looked at it straight on, but you can't see that. So I'm going to flatten it just so you can see sort of what I did, what was my process. So then I just tucked a piece under that paper clip, went to the next one. Now that was our base one. So it, it was already attached and it didn't have a paper clip. So I'll add a paper clip. Went to the next one, tucked my piece in there. And then on the fourth one, let's see, do we want, I think that would look kind of cool. Maybe we will put something like, like these guys on there. And then I like that background where it's a little more subtle. So that was my first step. But then I need to put the skinnier pieces over here. So now I need another paper clip. <laughs> so let's see. I think there is one. Yeah, like this one has the freesia background. So I think. Oh, but that's kind of cute. I kind of like that so that it's not like all freesia. So do you see how cute that is? And then you can just start building up. Now, let's see. Do we have a blue? Oh, maybe. Oh, look how cute that is. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, you need a few paper clips. I think you're going to end up needing eight. So, there's that. What would look cute here? That would look super cute. Or, oh, there's the green. Mm, I don't know. I think, well... Mm, I like this. <laughs> I like that a lot. That is so cute. So cute. Okay. And then we have one last one. We haven't used the stripes yet. Or should we go with this? Yeah, that's cuter, I think. That's, yeah, I like that a lot. What do you think? So that was my thought process. That is how I went through and decided. And then I don't, you've probably seen before, I have a whole bunch of these already die cut. Thank you so much to my die cutting fairy for all of these wonderful die cuts. And so then I just sort of went through and started tucking pieces on and just, just kind of looking like, you know, what do I want to do? Maybe I'll do that. And then let's see, I think over here, what I might do is kind of break that up a little with the green. Oh, but then it covers him. Nah. How about maybe if we put the green here and see how cute it picks up the green scarves. And maybe we could do, we could always do like a tag maybe on there. And maybe that guy. And... So I don't want to lose that. So what I might do on this one is something like one of these tags up here, kind of at an angle with a little piece of ribbon. Wouldn't that be cute? I think that'd be adorable. And then look, I think this might be fun. Bring in those stripes over here. Yep. So that, that was my process. I just wanted to kind of show you how I thought through all of that and what I did. And so, yeah, look, he would be cute on this page, wouldn't he? Well, not way up here, but just, just so I remember. So there you go. That's how I walked myself through it. Oh, and then I guess I should just show you. So then, so then once I know that this is what I wanted to do on this page, I slipped it off. Now there's, there's a piece on the back, remember? So you have to be mindful of that. So then I took off my paper clips, grabbed my adhesive, put the, the designer paper down, and I'm just going to leave that paper clipped because I'm not 100% sure, you know, if I'm going to use that piece. I think I am, but I'm going to just wait a minute on that. And then I know this one went on the left over here. So I will attach this one. Come on. There you go. 
Okay, so there we go. And then, so I have to flip it back over, and then I would attach it back onto here, and I would repeat that for all four so that I didn't sort of lose my place. Because if you just take all of these off at this point, you're not going to remember where you wanted them to be. So that is how I assembled it. And oh, these are cute. Oh my gosh. So much cuteness. Just want to pull that back in in case you wanted to take a screenshot. And then on this one that's finished, I used stamps from several sets. So let me see over here. I used Holly Jolly Wishes and the Peaceful Deer and Sweet Little Stockings. So I mixed and matched. I like you right here. You can see I used the trees. I used the greetings out of all three of those. And I just started to decorate. So my thought was here, pull out this shaded spruce. Isn't that cute? And then my snowman would have just sort of um, like faded into the background on the white. So I stamped the trees behind him so that he would kind of pop. And then I went with the misty moonlight, the ink and uh, the paper just to pull out the scarf there. And this cute guy, he would have just been lost on this pattern. So I die cut out of, I think this is stitched so sweetly and just jade and put him on top of there to pull out the jade and to let him sort of like literally pop right off that page. Isn't that cute? And so cute here with the, let's see, what is that? The Holly Jolly Wishes on a die cut. This is from a new um, pillow box die set. There are three cute labels and I love this one. So I stamped it on that. And again, same idea where stamping the trees behind them helps them to kind of stand out on that die cut. So there you go. That is the adorable pinwheel tower card, the dimensions, and hopefully those instructions were clear and understandable. If you missed the beginning, this size right here fits in the five by seven envelope. So when this is flat, this is going to fit right inside there. And I did get these on Amazon. One thing I avoided was extra dimensionals because this would have been so thick that I think it would have to be a package. But if you just keep everything fairly flat, I mean, you've already got all those layers, right? So there's already some thickness. But if you just keep this fairly flat, I'm pretty sure this will only need the extra ounce stamp. But I would suggest that you definitely check at your post office. Don't just go dump a bunch of these in the mailbox, but do check and make sure. Um, oh, good. You are enjoying it. Thank you. Toss up a few hearts here if you're enjoying this. I, I just think this is a really super fun. So cute. I love these. And I just love that it folds flat either direction. And I just can't wait until the recipients get this and they're like, oh my gosh, how cute is that? <laughs> Don't you think they're going to love it? I think they're going to love this. Thanks, Anne. She says, can't wait to try it. So much fun. Now, I should mention real quickly before you all jump off, the mini catalog, even though it says July, is actually not starting until August 3rd. There was a delay in getting some of the products. And the celebration catalog starts the same day. So you can pick, you can see sort of a sneak peek here. I can't open this yet because we're in July, but you can see that penguin paper. There's a beautiful dahlia set. There's some glimmer paper. Here's the black and white paper that we used on this one. And there are some stamp sets and Christmas paper. So lots to choose from in here. Free gifts. And you do not have to purchase out of this catalog to get the free gifts. You can purchase out of our annual catalog as well. 
If you don't have a demonstrator and you need catalogs, jump on over to my blog, pattystamps.com. And I have a link at the top that says catalogs, and then there's a request a catalog button. And I'd be happy to mail them to you if you would like to uh, work with me as your demonstrator. Now, I did send out about 400 of them yesterday. That was quite the epic trip to the post office. Those went out to the customers that regularly order from me. That's part of a perk of being one of my customers. It's a thank you. I send them out. So I saw Marianne on here. I've seen a few other people who um, are my regular customers. Yours are in the mail. Excuse me. I'm just trying to go back and there was a, must have been a, a comment or a question. Oh, thank you. Um, yes, I, I did try to cover the postage there. Uh, oh, good. Anne says, and Anne, your catalogs went in the mail as well. So much fun. Thank you, Paulette says, adorable. Stacy says, love, love, love. Helen says, fantastic. Yes, lots of fussy cutting. Uh, Katie, I'm sorry. If you don't like fussy cutting, yeah, that paper, um, but it's not that hard. I, these guys are so cute that I really didn't mind fussy cutting, <laughs> but I love to fussy cut. So hi, Robin. All right. I think I caught the comments. If you had a question, would you mind retyping it? Because I realized I was so excited about these projects. I forgot to read the comments and the questions. <laughs> yes, Roxanne, you can watch the replay. I will have this replay on my blog tomorrow and it'll be up on YouTube as well. Yay, Shan. Yes, yours went in the mail as well. Thanks, Jocelyn. Oh, good. She says my instructions are clear. So um, I hope that if you rewatch this, once you make it and you use my little tip here with, it looks so funny, with all the paper clips, I really think that once you do it, It'll make sense and you'll be like, okay, I get this and it's not that hard, but I wanted to show you that process just so that you wouldn't be too lost when you start to make one. Okay, any other questions? Yes, Marianne, I adore penguins. You should see my house at Christmas. Oh my goodness, full of stuffed penguins. My tree is full of penguin ornaments. I'll post that again this year because of this adorable penguin place bundle. And again, this will be available on August 3rd. So cute. So you might want to put that on your order so that you can work towards getting your paper for free. Yes, Joanne, I saw that as well. Joanne just said that she saw a video where you can do this center square with designer series paper. And yes, you can. What that accomplishes is when you fold this, it's not as thick in the middle because designer paper is thinner than cardstock. My fear with that was that because I can't stop doing this, <laughs> I was afraid that possibly the designer paper might start to crack on those four folds. Now, I haven't tried it, so I don't know. And I do think it's a great idea. But, you know, sometimes when you score designer paper, you can almost score like right through it, right? Um, at least I can. So I went with this method. Um, it just seemed a little more foolproof to me. I don't know. But yes, I did see that. Uh, yeah, but it's it's worth trying. I mean, you can always try it. Oh, Susan is asking envelope. Okay, so this particular one that we just did today that I have the measurements for is for the five by seven envelope. And I got this on Amazon. And I was sharing at the beginning, it's kind of a funny story. I ordered 250 for a project I was doing, mailing out things to my team. And I accidentally ordered another box. So I have lots. And that's why I'm going to make lots of them this size. <laughs> but you can scale this down. And there are lots of other measurements out there online that you can make this smaller so that you can fit it into the regular size envelope or even smaller. So I will try to find those and I will try to put 
all of the other measurements in a post soon. Um, I might need a little time to get that done, but... Yes, Katie, true. I hope that the per person will keep it forever. You're right. Strong. Um, okay, I, I'm not sure exactly, Shan. Yeah, okay, I know. I see what happened with your comment. So Shan says that she made one with ordinary paper, and it looks quite strong. So that's good to know. Great to know. All right. So, um, yeah, I hope that you'll visit me over on my blog. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you are just going to love all of the fun goodies in the celebration catalog. So I hope you enjoyed the sneak peeks. You know, I don't do that often, but I just wanted to come on and sneak peek you today. And I hope that you all have a wonderful weekend and a fabulous remainder of your day. I will see you all next week. All right. Have a wonderful day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.